What's up friends, today we're gonna take a look at an amazing game where the world's number 4 player Ali Reza Firuja got destroyed early in an opening by our favorite bishop's opening. Dimitrov is playing white against Firuja playing black and here the move bishop to c4 marks the beginning of the bishop's opening. From here the bishop targets this vulnerable square but on top of that you're also dragging your opponent out of his known territory and from here in most of the cases your opponents are gonna start improvising. Firuja played knight c6, pawn d3, knight f6. And that's the first interesting moment of the game. Normally in positions like that you'd expect white to play knight f3 and knight c3. But instead, white played knight to e2. What's the point? Well, actually, he wants to leave an opportunity to play pawn f4 sometime in the future. And by doing so, you're kind of playing a post-pawned king's gambit, but in a much more comfortable situation where you don't gambit a pawn, you don't weaken your king or anything like that. You want to develop pieces, castle, then you play f4 and start your attack again at a comfort of a fully developed position. Alright here black plays bishop c5, both sides castles and white goes pawn to a3 which is a prophylactic move and if black ever wants to go knight a5 and trade off this powerful bishop the bishop will be able to hide back on a2 making this move knight a5 pointless and therefore it's, this basically prevents this idea once and for all. Of course Firuja doesn't play that, instead he plays pawn a5 just in case preventing white from pushing his own pawn forward to b4 and attacking this bishop. Now white goes knight to c3. This not only develops a knight, but also pre prevents black from potentially breaking the center with a move pawn to d5. So now with this knight on c3, you've got like an extremely solid control over the square. Black goes pawn h6. I don't like the move too much, to be honest, but I, I understand that it's a standard move. A lot of players play this. I think that there was no reason for black to really worry about this bishop g5 idea. Black could have just played pawn to d6. And if white ever wants to play bishop g5, black can even chase it back like this and the bishop is kind of dull here on g3. Now I've recorded a bunch of videos about countering this pin, but apparently not everybody have watched them so far. So back to the game, Firuja played pawn h6. By the way, although I'm like criticized a little bit, but of course uh, h6 is a perfectly okay move here in this position. Might not be the best one though. And Firuja, by the way, is not a random guy. You know, he's the youngest guy ever who crossed 2800 rating ahead of Magnus Carlsen's record. And also, he's the only guy who made Magnus Carlsen quit World Championship matches not by defeating him, but by not qualifying to play against him. Which is quite a bizarre situation that happened in chess. Anyway, let's move on. White played knight g3. So from here, the knight is ready, potentially, to penetrate in black's territory. And on f5, it will be in close proximity to the king. So that's quite annoying. And black goes pawn d6 preparing for his bishop to trade off the knight if it ever goes there. White plays pawn h3, the same prophylactic move, preventing black from going bishop g4 and targeting the queen. Black plays bishop to e6. Here's a little quiz for you. Should white take here or not? I mean, it's a very common error to actually go ahead and take the bishop. Because if you do so, I, basically in most cases I never recommend that you do that. If you take there, that only helps black to activate his rook along the semi-open file. Plus this pawn on e6 is very handy for black. It does not allow either of white's knights to go forward. Therefore, like taking on e6 would be quite a significant positional error for white, but he didn't. He instead played king h1, which is a pretty cool move. Now, notice that we don't have to do anything about this bishops, actually, because, you know, our bishop is already defended, and therefore you can just do nothing about it. And the reason of playing king to h1 is that we move our king off this pin, and therefore our pawn is ready to march forward to f4 and start our planned king side attack. Now, black decided to trade here on c4. There's no problem for us to have these double pawns. In fact, they're overprotecting the d5 square, enabling for your knight to go there in the future. Black plays rook e8, a bit of a mysterious move at first, like what does the rook do there, but in fact it's a prophylactic move. Black still anticipates that white is gonna play pawn f4, that's why he played king h1 on the previous move, to make it possible and to sidestep from this pin, and he says, hey, if you wanna play f4, I'm gonna trade, and now my rook will be active along this file. White could still go for this variation, it's perfectly fine, but instead he played another move. Instead of f4, he played knight to d5 landing the knight on this great outpost square. Black can't really tolerate this monstrous knight, therefore he trades it off, but now I've managed to recapture and notice that somehow this pawn used to be on d3, right? And it somehow went to d5, but sidestepped the d4 square. 
So for a couple moves, white surprisingly played checkers. Anyway, jokes aside, it's definitely a good thing for white to achieve that. Now this pawn on d5 pushes this, this knight back and generally speaking gives white some space advantage, making it harder for black to maneuver. And here white still could have possibly played pawn f4, but now it's even stronger to include your queen into the attack. And queen g4, which was played in the game, actually creates a straightforward threat of bishop takes h6, taking advantage of this pin. You know, along the g-file, so bishop h6 is quite annoying. Black played queen to c8, offering an exchange of queens. And notice that black plays all the right moves, supposedly, right? All the normal, natural looking moves. And yet his position is slowly but surely goes down. <laughs> so that's quite an interesting fact. By the way, one question is, uh, what if instead black just played knight to g6? Simply covering the g-file that way. Well, in that case, this knight no longer defends the square f5, and white will happily land his own knight there, and that is really annoying. Maybe you can play h4, h5, and once this knight moves, queen takes g7 checkmate. Something like that is coming. It's very difficult for black to stop it. In the game, again, black played queen c8, offering an exchange of queens, but of course white does not want that because white wants to attack black's king. Therefore, white went queen to h5. And now it is the 15th move of the game and it is already resignable for black because white is ready to play bishop takes h6, open up the king and checkmate it within a couple moves. So basically black could safely resign right here. He instead played a couple more moves. He played king to h7 but they didn't stop bishop from being sacrificed here. And without this king white would capture this pawn but with king on h7 it defends the pawn on h6 but no longer defends the other one. So white goes for that pawn, and after king h8 and knight h5, black here resigned in view of all these checkmating threats, and that is it. Now, quite a devastating game for one of the best players in the world playing as black. And also notice that, once again, he hasn't played any noticeable errors. He seemingly played all the fun moves, but just because white had a particular plan that he pursued while black was just playing individual moves, white managed to win this game so nicely. And here is a puzzle of the day. It is white to play and win, and if you can't find the winning solution for white, please write it down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the bishop's opening and would like to explore it, feel free to check out this video that covers the opening in greater details. In fact, it got over 2 million views so far. Also, if you're enjoying this so far and don't want to miss out on future uploads as well as to support the channel, you may subscribe over here. Have a great rest of the day, and I'll talk to you soon.